Greetings, faithful viewers. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. I am Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. If you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure and do so. Click that notification bell so you don't miss future episodes. Also, if you have questions that you would like to ask the pastor, you can email me at atpholycross at gmail.com. That's atpholycross, all one word, at gmail.com. Today's question, dear pastor, how do I witness to a former member of an Armstrongist group? Their main teaching seems to be Anglo-Israelism and the observance of the Old Testament law like Sabbath, festivals, and food laws. They're also required to tithe in accordance with the Old Testament law, and these tithes can be upwards of 30% of their income. After Armstrong's death in 1986, the Worldwide Church of God, which he founded, began to embrace Orthodox Christianity and now operates as Grace Communion International. But the turn from Armstrong's doctrines led to the formation of two splinter groups, the United Church of God in 1995 and the Restored Church of God in 1999. The RGC was started by David Pack, who claims to be Elijah and the only true successor to Herbert Armstrong's apostleship. Pack claims that the RCG is the only true church and that all other churches are apostate, so that there is no salvation outside the Restored Church of God. This would mean that you and I are apostate and would have no assurance of our salvation. Is this true? All right, Armstrongism. Yeah, whether it's in its original incarnation as the Worldwide Church of God or in its more recent splinter groups that you mentioned, is not the common Christian faith. In fact, Armstrongism isn't even Christian. While Herbert Armstrong's teachings diverge from scriptures in all kinds of different ways, Armstrongism, whether it's Worldwide Church of God, United Church of God, or Restored Church of God, Armstrongism is best understood if we understand three fundamental teachings uh, of Armstrong, specifically his teaching about God, salvation, and, as you mentioned, Anglo-Israelism, or sometimes called British Israelism, and also then how those three are intertwined. So first, uh, regarding God, Armstrongism vigorously denies the Trinity, but not in the way that Unitarians deny the Trinity. Unitarians uh, imagine that there can't be distinct persons within the one Godhead. Armstrong, however, taught the opposite of that. He taught that the idea of a Trinity limited God to three persons. Uh, and he believed that uh, that, that limited God because he believed that God was a growing family of gods. So Jesus, he taught, isn't the eternal Son of God. He's another God entirely, separate from God the Father, who's always existed with God the Father. But he only became the Son of God when he was born in the flesh of the Virgin Mary. He also taught them that the Holy Spirit isn't a person, but the love of God or the power of God. Salvation, then, for Armstrong consisted of being born again, reborn into God's family, not as adopted children, but as gods. So all true believers, whom Armstrong equated with members of the Worldwide Church of God, all true believers will become God, even as God himself is God. Uh, and, and he taught this because he believed that God reproduces himself in believers, so that God's children becomes God. Uh, just like everything on the earth, since Genesis reproduces according to its own kind, uh, God reproduces himself in believers. Uh, people become members of the God family then by being begotten or conceived uh, of the Holy Spirit. Now, Armstrong understood rebirth, that is regeneration or being born again, as a future event that would happen when Christ returned uh, and uh, at the first resurrection. So all who believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and commit themselves to following the Mosaic law then are begotten or conceived as children of God. But they have not yet been born of God. They've not been reborn. That rebirth will only happen when Christ returns, brings his worldly kingdom and resurrects believers in their spirit bodies, which isn't technically a resurrection, and then they'll reign together with Christ. Armstrong taught this because he believed that the Greek word genao should typically be translated as to be begotten, in the sense of conceived, and not 
born. Armstrong wrote that believers are children of God in the same sense that the embryo fetus in the, uh, is the unborn child of human parents. We are in the state, the time element, after generation conception, but prior to birth. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of the adoption of sons through faith in Christ Jesus. Scripturally, all who believe in Christ Jesus then are reborn as sons of God, not just conceived as sons of God and awaiting a future rebirth. Peter, in his first epistle, uh, describes Christians as having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. That's in 1 Peter 1, 23. And then in chapter 2, verse 2, he writes that believers should, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word. So scripture doesn't teach that believers are merely conceived as sons of God who are awaiting a future rebirth. The Holy Spirit regenerates us in holy baptism and through the preaching of the gospel so that we are then reborn as sons of God and co-heirs of Christ, of every co-heirs with Christ of every heavenly blessing. Armstrong and his adherents then fundamentally, fundamentally misunderstand the adoption of sons that comes through faith in Christ Jesus and baptism, and that that rebirth is the adoption as sons of God, who remain completely human, but yet in whom the Holy Spirit dwells uh, to renew the image of God. So the gospel, as we mentioned just a moment ago then, according to Armstrong, consists of this future rebirth as children of God, who are gods themselves, who will rule along with God in his future worldly government. At his second coming, Christ will establish a millennial government, reign for a thousand years, and at that time then he'll resurrect all true believers in spirit bodies. That's when we'll finally be reborn as sons of God and become literal gods in the God family. Once that millennium reign is complete, God will raise the dead who didn't believe the gospel during their lifetime so that they can now learn it. If at that time they reject the gospel, they will then be annihilated with the willful unbelievers uh, who rejected the truth during their earthly lives. Uh, this, however, contradicts Jesus' words to Pilate in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. And his annihilationist views uh, denied the words of Jesus in Matthew 25, 46, that the unbelieving will go away into everlasting punishment. The, the third strand of Armstrongism that's absolutely necessary to understand uh, is then Anglo-Israelism or British Israelism. Very simply, this means that the ten lost tribes of Israel, deported in 722-23 by the Assyrians, migrated to what is now Northwestern Europe and the Anglo-Saxons of Great Britain, then, are the direct descendants of the northern kingdom of Israel. This also means that the Anglo-Saxons who migrated to America to become colonists and form the United States are also the direct descendants of the Israelites. Uh, Armstrong got this uh, because a, a few Hebrew words, at least in his ears, sounded like British and Saxon. Uh, ultimately, no matter how we got there, though, Anglo-Israelism denies that the church, which is the body of believers, is the Israel of God. Uh, it, but yet it's impossible to understand Armstrong's theology of salvation apart from Anglo-Israelism. Let's walk this out a bit. In Armstrong's belief system, since white Americans and the British are direct descendants of the Israelites, they must observe Mosaic law. It's necessary for their salvation. Armstrong taught that faith in Christ is necessary for salvation, but it's not sufficient. You have to have the works of Mosaic law uh, because they believe that they're descendants of the northern kingdom of Israel. This is why followers of Armstrong observe the Sabbath, follow the dietary restrictions and the Mosaic festivals and the Mosaic tithes, all the ceremonies, because it's necessary for their salvation. Now, Armstrong himself admitted that they couldn't follow all of Mosaic law. It can't all be observed. So he justified his partial observance of the Mosaic law by claiming that Christians aren't under the old covenant anymore, but neither are they under the new covenant because that, he claimed, hasn't or won't be inaugurated until Christ returns and establishes his millennial kingdom than when uh, everyone is reborn as actual gods, sons of God. 
So salvation for the Armstrongite is by faith in Christ and his obedience to the law of Moses. This is literally the Judaizing heresy that St. Paul wrote against in his epistles. Uh, he says ex explicitly in uh, Galatians 2.16 that we are justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Faith and works are diametrically opposed in Galatians. Romans 3.28 as well, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from deeds of the law. Again, separating faith from works of the law in the matter of salvation. The fact that Armstrong's teachings then are so radically divergent from the common Christian faith, then it doesn't bother his followers uh, because they are restorationists, meaning that they believe that after the death of the apostles, the church became immediately apostate and that the gospel wasn't restored in the church until their founder uh, rediscovered it. Uh, restorationism, this is what provides them cover for their heretical teachings and also then why they teach that there is no salvation outside of their organization. Uh, but again, this is contrary. Uh, restorationism is contrary to Jesus' promises about the church, specifically uh, that the gates of hell won't prevail against it. You know, and, and also, you know, don't worry about David Pack being Elijah. He'll have to take that one up with Jesus, who said in Matthew eleven fourteen, if you're willing to receive it, he, John, is the Elijah to come. So, as for witnessing to folks that are coming out of Armstrongism, uh, understanding this heresy will go a long way in knowing how to apply the scripture in, in your conversation with them. And as you do so, pray for God the Holy Spirit to open their ears and hearts to the words which he gives you to speak. To show them the simple gospel and commend your efforts to the triune God. After all, you, know, you can plant, you can water, but God alone gives the growth. So leave the outcome to him. Thanks for asking. I hope this helps. We'll see you next time for another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor.